So people who already I have... was focusing on the uh, acid reflux. I've seen so many patients. I they come in with this omeprazole, pantoprazole, all these acid blocking agents, and uh, we just implement this simple technique, and all of a sudden they don't need any medication. Yeah, that that's very powerful, and that's something that we have seen. The time restricted eating completely changes the gut microbiome. Uh, what happens is our our stomach actually has a rhythm rhythm daily rhythm and acid production so that means you know every time we eat our stomach has to produce acid to mm-hmm. digest the food if you eat the same food late at night then our stomach produces more acid disproportionately more acid mm-hmm. and second thing is the acid actually comes up and then our mouth our saliva right neutralizes that acid but at night we are programmed to reduce saliva production because unless we reduce saliva production we will be drowning in our sleep mm, mm, mm. so we have less saliva production to neutralize the acid and if we eat more food later at night then we produce more acid mm. and then the third thing that happens is our gi tract actually goes to sleep so that means a small intestine doesn't move that much that much mm. so the food just stays in the stomach Right. Mm. So that's, I think, one reason why, if we eat late, then we have more acid reflux. Mm, 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 mm. You know, I can tell you from my uh, patient experience as well, right? So you know, um, not only in terms of uh, the medications, the biggest problem that people are doing in terms of heartburn is that they go to sleep right after they eat, and mainly they are having at uh, bedtime. So the first thing that we always do is to do not eat late at night. That is the number one thing that is written on the GERD uh, handout that we give. But people don't focus on that and people go directly to the medications. Okay, omeprazole 20 milligram daily. Okay, how much should I take? <laughs> how much should I take? But anyway, so uh, I, in my personal experience, I can tell you that I have been implementing this technique to all my GI patients, not only with GERD, fatty liver, big time. And uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. I'll tell you my experience and you tell me whether you're seeing this in your mice study as well. So patients come in with fatty liver, time-restricted feeding, elevated liver enzymes first. And then three, four months later, liver enzymes come down. In addition to that, the fibrosis, the scar tissue in the liver gets reversed uh, from stage three to stage two. Is, do, do you see that in mice? So actually, almost... Uh... 10 years ago, the first time when we published our paper, um, that was the biggest surprise when we opened up the mice. The mice on time restricted feeding had no fatty liver disease. Uh-huh. Absolutely none. And then what we did, we sectioned the liver and then sent it to a pathologist who was blinded to the mice. Mm-hmm. And he scored the Brown score, which is the fibrosis score. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And clearly shows, saw that the time restricted feeding reduced the Brown score. Mm. The fibrosis was very low. And subsequently, we have put many mice, different types of mice, even mice that have a bad gene, mice with genes that will make them more prone to fatty liver disease. And if we put them on time restricted feeding, then their fatty liver disease is reduced or completely eliminated. Mm. So that's why we think that this, you know, the point is the liver stores fat and that's why you get fatty liver disease the fat should be stored in the fat tissue and by time restricted eating uh, mm-hmm. during the fasting time the liver can export that extra fat to the fat tissue and second the liver can also burn that extra fat within the liver so that's what we see when we do more sophisticated analysis because we can take out the mouse liver we look at the genes and enzymes what we find is Time restricted feeding just supercharges this pathway or the mechanism mm. that burns fat within liver. Mm. Mm. So that may be the mechanism. How about um, IBS patients? You know, like I have patients with uh, severe IBS, like IBS diarrhea. They go to the bathroom like eight, ten times a day, and uh, we change them. Oh, change this diet. Oh, low FODMAP diet. Oh, keto diet. But uh, since I've been doing this, I've been implementing that as well to my uh, uh, patients. And um, I can tell you like 50 to 60% of patients are getting better. Yeah. So again, this is where we look at when mice go to poop. 
Mm. And mice actually uh, go to bathroom almost uh, 10, 15 times throughout uh -huh. the day uh -huh. and night. But then when we put uh, time restricted feeding, uh, so this also we observed in a very weird way because we are trying to see whether the mice are pooping out a lot of fat or so we're collecting mouse poop throughout 24 hours. What we found was the time restricted fed mice don't actually poop for almost 12 hours. So they go to the bathroom only <laughs> four or five times, but not like 10, 15 times that the other mice do. Uh, uh, uh. So it was very clear in mouse experiment too.